better looks like a Peter Gibbons. Uh -huh. Oh, there you are. What we're just talking about you. You must be Peter Gibbons. Uh huh. Terrific. I'm Bob Slidell. This is my associate, Bob Porter. Uh, hi, Bob. Bob, pretty much go ahead and grab a seat and join us for a minute or two. You see, what we're actually trying to do here is we're just we're trying to get a feel for how people spend their day at work. So, if you would, would you walk us through a typical day for you? Yeah. Great. Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door. That way, Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Tell him uh, space out? Yeah. I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. I do that for uh, probably another hour after lunch, too. I'd say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 minutes of real, actual work. Uh, Peter, would you be a good sport and indulge us and just tell us a little more? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something about TPS reports. Uh, TPS the thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. Don't, don't care? It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Initech ships a few extra units, I don't see another dime. So where's the motivation? And here's something else, Bob. I have eight different bosses right now. I beg your pardon? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means that when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me about it. That's my only real motivation, is not to be hassled. That and the fear of losing my job. But you know, Bob, that'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Would you bear with me for just a second, please? OK. What if, and believe me, this is so <laughs> hypothetical. But what if you were offered some kind of a stock option equity sharing program? Would that do anything for you? I don't know, I guess. Listen, I'm gonna go. Uh, it's been really nice talking to both of you guys. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, the pleasure's you. all on this side yes. of the table, trust me. Good luck with your layoffs, all right? I hope your firings go really well. Thanks a lot. Great. Yeah. Wow. Kohaloyim Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Waharakapadash Double Honor City Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone, the ones who rule well over the flock of Israel. Most will say Shalom and salutations to you, brothers out here that's pushing the words of truth and sincerity and Shalom to all the elect Akim and Aqua scattered around as you like for this Shalom to you all. All right, so that clip you just saw was from the movie The Office. Pretty good movie, kind of like a dry comedy, if you will. Uh, back in the day, came out, and um, but more importantly, the clip was concerning, um, you know, not being somebody with a lack of drive, a lack of motivation, um, because there's no incentive when you start to weigh the pros and the cons of doing your job. Let's talk about your everyday nine to five, the way you make your money. Um, you know, you only give as much as the incentive in which you can grow. All right. Even when you're talking about people who are in their own business, the idea is to scale up, you know, scalability, how, how much you can grow. Well, in the idea, when you're working for a nine to five in a position where you're working for a boss, <clears throat> the more work you do should be you should be rewarded for that. It should. But in most reality situations, brothers face and we all face, especially here in Babylon, you know, you're not going to be rewarded for the little bit of extra work that you do. As a matter of fact, you know, they're going to treat you like you should be doing that and you should you're doing it for the company. All right. So ultimately, here's another clip that show, uh, you know, that even Esau had it. He uses the same idea, just like in the movie is in reality. He uses the same idea when he's um uh, uh, at work for for his boss. Let's check out this real clip quick clip just to discuss the difference in your performance between last year and 2020 you were the top rated employee in 2020 but it doesn't feel like you've been nearly as present or focused since then yeah yeah what's changed 
Well, yeah, so 2020 uh, was the second year in a row I didn't get a raise, even though I was the top employee. And when I asked why I couldn't get a raise, you said it was because my position, no, my pay was a fair market value for my position. And when I asked for my pay falls on the pay grade scale, you said it was below the median. So the below the average of what I could make uh, in my position. So at that point, I just decided I'm going to become a fair market value employee and put in a below average amount of effort because that's what I feel like you pay me to do. You've created an environment where there's no incentive for me to work hard, so I don't. All right, and so as you can see, Esau too, you know, shares in the sentiment that, you know, you need to be properly rewarded for the amount of work that you put in. All right, and we understand fully that the work that we put in uh, for the Heavenly Father is for a reward that's way great beyond what time we actually going to put in meaning the reward is going to be that much greater than all the pressure all the trouble all the tribulation that we face right now here's a scripture to prove it this is first peters 1 and 9 receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul so first and foremost all right the reward that we are going to obtain is salvation Salvation from who are enemies, salvation from destruction, salvation on judgment day, salvation from persecution, deliverances, miracles, these things that we believe that the Heavenly Father is able and capable of doing in these tribulous or uh, tumultuous times that's coming up. We're going to have a receiving, we're going to be on the receiving end of the salvation of your souls. Why? Because of our faith that we have. All right. Revelations 2 and 11 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That second death is dealing with uh, um, the first death going back to the time of Noah. This second death dealing with this third world's war, which is thermonuclear holocaust, right? So salvation is first on the list as far as what we're able to receive. Uh, secondly, what we're going to get as far as reward for the work that we're doing. All right. We're not ashamed or afraid to put in work for the Heavenly Father because we know he's going to be good for it. We don't got to sit around asking year in and year out for a raise, a reward or something better that he hasn't promised yet. No, the Lord is going to deliver on all his promises. But you got to have faith to be able to believe that. All right. But next Revelation 14 and 5, it says in, in their mouth was found no guile for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh. Without fault means you're sinless. All right. And so the Lord, uh, the, the the property in which Yahweh Shah died and was crucified and is, is the way in which he atoned for our sins so that we can be uh, uh, re rewarded with sinlessness in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. We are righteous through the blood of Yahweh Shah. That's how we got our justification. That's how we're justified in the eyes of the Lord. That's how we have no fault and no guile. The scripture says, blessed is he when the Lord imputed not iniquity upon him, meaning they don't, he doesn't charge us with the sins that we're guilty of because we are Yahweh Shah to redeem us from those sins. So therefore, you have more. You have more blessings uh, uh, dealing with when you work for the Heavenly Father, when you're working for him. All right. What else? The scriptures continually tell us all these things that we're going to get. Right. All these things we shall receive. A lot of these things we starting to receive right now, especially when it comes to faith. First John three and two said, beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh? And if doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when we but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. <clears throat> so the fact that we're going to be like who like who's that him we are going to be like yahweh shah and when he appears guess how he's going to appear he's not going to come through flesh and blood again meaning he's not going to come through birth of a canal of a woman all right he's not going to be born into this world what well, he is he's going to return the same way he uh, uh left he ascended into heaven when he left the and the men stood standing around gazing upward while the angels spoke to them saying marvel not that the Lord leave you this way because when he returned, he's, he's going to return the same way he left. So you're going to be able to look into the heavens and see uh, how the returning. Right. And if he's returning from the heavens, that means he's going to come back in spectacular form. All right. He's going to come back. It's all prophesied. They shall come back with a holy host of angels with them. Right. Well, you know, riding upon uh, 
a chariot, all right, upon a cloud, all right, with a sword, meaning with, with all form of destruction, destructive weapons with him, right, with full power and glory and might. That's how the Lord is going to pair. All right. So if we're he's going to come back in full glory and appear, the Lord is going to have to change our bodies in the twinkling of an eye so that we have that same appearance, that likeness, that marvelousness, that glory that the Lord has, man. And these are all things we could bet on. So, uh, you know, just keep it short and sweet. Get back to work now. Uh, I'll wrap this out. This video is edifying. I'll make a part two. Lord willing, shalom.